every two millennia, there's a pendulum change of swing, propelling human fate and all the changes it may bring, on halting its momentum for another fateful run. Its strike marks a blow into the past and shapes what is to come. Its last stroke brought untimely death to the archaic age. Rome and Athens both succumbed, engulfed in Christian rage. Midway through its former swing, the pious era grew, its founding fathers unaware of what was to ensue. A 20th century man am I, who has chance to witness bear a pendulum stroke come to an end and wonder what may fare. As I into the future look, I shudder in dismay. What lies beyond this cosmic turn and what might come our way? Sensing the changes befalling the region of Greece, Hellas, something compelled me to write these verses in 1990. Later, in 2003, the, the same verses led me to the following thoughts, which I published in uh, newspapers locally, with the uh, following question. What are we as humanity? Do we serve some universal purpose, or is our existence something of chance in a chaotic cosmos? If there is order in this universe, to what is our evolution as races and civilizations attributed? These are questions that often torment every thinking person, especially as of late. For as we traverse the opening decades of the 21st century, we can all attest to the acceleration of changes, both socially, technologically, uh, and technologically, as well as geopolitically, in the globalized new world order. Perhaps an allegorically retrospective look at our ever-changing world may shed some light as to where we are headed and what our purpose is in the universe. Let us imaginatively liking the, lighten the course of human history as it has unraveled in the West, in Western civilization, since the West's cultural and environmental role has predominantly affected the globe in all aspects, to that of a pendulum swinging from a colossal universal clock. Let us further imagine that the trajectory of each swing represents a 2,000 year segment of this course. The beginning of the swing marks the birth of an uh, era, the middle of the swing marks its bloom, and the end its death. Whilst the directional shift of the swing to the other, uh, towards the other direction signifies the birth of a new order and so on. Thus far, the propelling force of our metaphorical uh, pendulum has been man's desire for affinity with the divine. The various interpretations of what commands the universe uh, have always ordained the spirit of every era. Western memory, from a Hellenocentric viewpoint, since Greece, Hellas, is its cradle, can enumerate at least three era ordaining swings of this epoch recording pendulum. The first age was marked by ter uh, terrestrial worship. Caves and chasms functioned as shelter, as well as places of adoration. Sacrificial holes in the ground discovered in the Greek regions of Elatia, Thessaly, and Crete are indicative of an era when humans attributed the origins of everything uh, into the, to the entrails of Mother Earth. Snakes were considered as part of her divinity, for instance, the Cretan snake goddess, and these were worshipped as symbols of healing, rebirth, and immortality, probably due to their shedding of old skin for new one. The caduceus staff, Greek kirikion, depicting intertwined snakes, which today is the universal insignia of the medical profession, is a remnant of that era. The second age was to transfer the divine to the surface of the planet with man as the focus point. Of great symbolic significance marking the death of uh, the terrestrial age was Apollo's slaying of the serpent Python, uh, the son of the earth. Hence, the god's epithet, P, 
Pythian Apollo. So uh, in this way, we can see that so culturally traumatic was the shift that the god uh, from, from the terrestrial worship to that of the human formed worship of gods like Apollo, that the god himself had to be purified from the kill by serving a three year term in exile from the region where he had killed uh, the uh, Python, Python uh, where he was later to establish the Oracle of Delphi. The subject of serpent and monster worship, uh, which was killed, is beloved throughout world lore, since it suggests the emancipation of humankind from the terrestrial forces. In Greece, the subject reoccurs uh, with, uh, when Heracles kills a serpent-headed uh, Lernaean Hydra, when uh, Bellerophonte does away with a chimera, and when Perseus slays a snake-headed Medusa. Icons of Horse Mountain St. Ge uh, George slaying the reptile-like dragon still echo the gone-by eras to this day throughout the Christian world. Although Mother Nature, Mother Earth's forests, and mountains still held the, an, an allure of mystery for the ancients. Now, anthropomorphic forces like those of the Greek pantheon reigned over the elements. Further atten attesting to this was the victory of the Olympians over the children of the earth, the Titans, whom the former incarcerated in her depths, her entrails, which uh, the Greeks referred to as Tartarus. This interaction, this, excuse me, this interaction between man and nature thrived during the Archaic Age of Greece, when our metaphorical pendulum was traversing the middle of its course. The spirit of the era was sung philosophically, poetically, and artistically during the Classical Age, but the end of its course was marked by the expansion of the Roman Empire, when humans began to treat nature with impunity, literally plundering it for fun. Forests were decimated to build fortresses and siege engines, while animals provided amusement in arenas. So I dare say that the classical era of Greece marked the, uh, the pinnacle of youth, uh, of human civilization. And the beginning, the onset of Rome marked in the beginning of its demise. The third turn of the pendulum coincided with the advent of Christianity, whose era transported the divine from the earth to the heavens. The establishment of monotheism put an end to the earthly nature of godliness. Since nature had been stripped of her mysteries, people began to seek spiritual salvation in churches. Natural locales like springs and forests were no longer considered uh, to be sanctuaries for worship as they had been in the past. The domes of churches that emanated the heavenly origin of God had replaced those uh, locales. The Middle Ages marked the culmination of this pendulum swing, while the Industrial Revolution its demise. The maxim so fervently embraced by the Protestant mentality, God helps those who help themselves, supplied the Western world with the ethical grounds on which to sustain mass industry, which created the shift from a theocentric society to one that consumed what the industry produced, a consumer society. The drastic cosmogonical changes brought on by the technological leaps of industry marked the end of the third swing and initiated the fourth. The 1990s spearheaded the current towards globalization, which meant the rapid decline of natural economies and the birth of a global village, quote, global village, unquote, in an economic sense, but not without social consequences for national identities are now being tried as well. We can attest to this uh, by uh, contemplating uh, what is happening to Europe. As both observers and the initiators of the fourth pendulum swing, our generation is plotting the course that will shape the fate of things to come with an important advantage. Assessing the last three swings may enable us to answer our initial question. What are we as humanity? What have we developed? Uh, why have we developed to the point of networking all the civilizations of our planet through the internet? 
in the way a brain network its, networks itself via neurons to think collectively. Is it by chance that the whole course of human history is now being chronicled in electronic form that can be disseminated in the airways of the cosmos? If we assume that there is universal order, is there a possibility that the universe needs thinking creatures like us to provide itself with a sense of its own consciousness? How else could it know of its own existence if not through intelligent life forms which it creates? Statisticians render it possible that there may be at least 100,000 civilizations developing in our galaxy alone. This would certainly vindicate René Descartes when he said, I think, therefore I am. How does the universe know that it is if it doesn't think? Our very lives and each planet, hosting intelligent life forms, therefore, that with time network their world to achieve collective thought, may very well be minuscule explosions of cosmic reflection giving the universe a sense of consciousness, pretty much the same way that our own brain generates innumerable electronic charges per millisecond to function. This likelihood is further supported if we consider that in universal time, the birth and death of a solar system does not exceed a fraction of a cosmic second. Could this be our role then? That is to say, to collectively mature to the extent of understanding the universe and our world, so as to offer it a multifaceted thought of itself before we destroy ourselves through belligerent idiocy? At this point, one might cynically ask, oh, that sounds fine, but if, it, if each of our civilizations and each of our lives uh, is an infinitesimal explosion of cosmic thought, what about those who don't think and the, and, and the nations that have not produced anything by way of thought and uh, which do not function intelligently? Well, one equally cynical answer could be such creatures and such civilizations may also serve a purpose, that is, to produce greater explosions amongst those who do think, pretty much the same way that manure nourishes a flower to bloom. Einstein is a novel example of a, of a thinker who was prompted by the masses who, do, uh, who don't think by saying there are two infinities, the infinity of the universe and the infinity of human idiocy. For the latter, I'm not, about the latter, I'm not sure, rather the former, excuse me. And this also echoes our own Greek Anaxagoras of the 5th century BC, uh, whom uh, Aristotle mentions, uh, and who referred to the creative forces of the universe as the nous. Nous means mind in Greek. And uh, he observed that the mind encompasses all creatures, but only few creatures partake in the mind. As protagonists of this fourth pendulum swing, therefore, let us consider the former three swings, which transfer the notion of divinity from the caverns, the entrails of the earth, to the surface, and from there to the heavens. Our metaphorical pendulum may very well have moved the hour hands of our own cosmic clock to the time, to the time of maturity. This means that the intelligentsia amongst us, amongst humanity, will form this way to be that of self-knowledge, that is to say, the wisdom that the divine and the movement of things is not to be found outside ourselves, but within us, for we comprise an integral part of cosmic impetus, intelligence, and consciousness in the wake of a universe that evolves as it imagines itself. Thank you for listening.